All right. I'm going to cooperate this one. Continuing our study in Romans, the eighth chapter, we're talking about eight ways that the Holy Spirit works inside of a Christian. And this is Romans 8, verses 1 through 16. And we've already covered a, a few of the points. I'll uh, we'll see if we can finish up today. Let's go ahead and quickly read through our text. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus, because the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, since it was limited by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in flesh like ours under sin's domain and as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be accomplished in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those whose lives are according to the flesh think about the things of the flesh. But those whose lives are according to the Spirit, about the things of the Spirit. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. For the mindset of the flesh is hostile to God, because it does not submit itself to God's law, for it is unable to do so. Those whose lives are in the flesh are unable to please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God lives in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. The old person that you were is dead. You're a new creature in Christ. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. So then, brothers, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. All those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. So that's why we say here it's an inside job, it's eight things that the Holy Spirit does in the believer's life. And we've already covered how the Holy Spirit imparts spiritual life. In verse 2, the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. The Weymouth translation in verse 10, but if Christ is in you, Though your body must die because of sin, yet your spirit has life because of righteousness. Okay, and I won't go into that. The Holy Spirit indwells us. You, however, in verse 9 it says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, since the spirit of God lives in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, pay close attention to that second sentence there. If, the, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him, does not belong to God. And we have a lot of religions in the world, and there are a whole lot of people that... Uh, especially in the society that we live in, that 
just love uh, tolerance, religious tolerance, moral tolerance. We want to accept everybody the way that they are. But even though we may accept people the way that they are, I want you to know that God does not. God does not accept people uh, who are spiritually or morally against his will. And so any religion that does not recognize Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the only way, the only truth, and the only life, the only way unto the Father is a false religion. Any morality that, that does not follow the rules of the Bible is a false morality. Any ideals, any philosophies that do not coincide with the principles that are found in the Bible, they are a false reality. Therefore, we have to be very careful as Christians and allow the Holy Spirit that resides in us to differentiate between that which is right and that which is wrong, between those who would teach something that is right and those that would teach something that is wrong. And a couple of the areas that uh, we, we bump into this all the time is, of course, religion, that all religions are right, no, only religions that recognize Jesus Christ are correct. Those who only call him a great prophet are incorrect. Those that recognize him as God in the flesh who died for our sins and was raised again on the third day to justify us, those are right religions. And when it comes to morality, we have a great battle going on right now with gay rights. Just as an example, there are many more, but we'll use gay rights. There's a big battle going on there. Well, if you know your Bible, you know that a man laying with a man or a woman laying with a woman is an abomination to God. And we may tolerate people's sexual persuasions but God does not God says he never designed a man to be with a man or a woman to be with a woman the parts just don't match and this is something that uh, we should understand especially as Christians because the Spirit lives inside of us and reveals to us whether things people are doing are right or wrong. You know, right now there's a big battle going on whether uh, on the news, whether um, we've just had another uh, terrorist attack at our embassy in the Middle East at our embassies, but especially the one embassy. And there's a big to-do about whether they are lying to us or not. Whether the administration is lying to us or not. Well, I tell you, the only way to know for sure the difference is to test the spirit. Listen to the Spirit of God inside of you. Everybody's got an opinion, but the opinions of men don't mean anything. It's the opinion of God who lives inside of us in the form of the Holy Spirit that lets us know what's right and what's wrong. So God indwells us, and he indwells us in a special way. He assures us that we are children of God. He assures us that we have been adopted into the family of God. And this comes from verses 15 and 16. 
For you did not receive the, a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. So it says, you did not receive the Holy Spirit as a form of slavery so that you would fall back into being afraid of God's wrath, but instead you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out Abba. And that word Abba literally translates Daddy. We, we cry out to God, Daddy. A closer relationship than most people can even imagine. We get to have because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. How can you know for sure you're a child of God or not? If the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and you have a blessed assurance, you have an absolute knowledge that you are a child of God. If, you, if the Spirit is not in there and the Spirit is not revealing to you that you are a child of God, then there is something missing. As one minister is so fond of saying, God created everybody with a, a, there's a God-shaped hole in our heart. And only God can fill that hole. We're always looking for something to fulfill us, to give us, give our life value and purpose. And it's only God that can fill that empty space. But once he does, he fills it with the Holy Spirit and we become the adopted children of God with all the rights and all the privileges that a child should have. The Holy Spirit also changes the way we think. It's what it says in verse 5. For those whose lives are according to the flesh, think about the things of the flesh. But those whose lives are according to the Spirit, about the things of the Spirit. So those of us who live our lives primarily for the flesh, that is to please the senses, touch, taste, sight, sound, smell. Some people live basically as animals just to please their own senses, to gather up as much for themselves as they possibly can. And that's living life according to the flesh. But we who are God's children and have the Holy Spirit inside of us, we no longer live our lives according to the flesh. Our primary concern are the things that are of the Spirit. Those whose lives are according to the Spirit, we worry about the things of the Spirit. And what are the things of the Spirit that God would have us pay more attention to than the stuff here on earth? Well, we can list the fruit of the Spirit as an example. Things like love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith, self-control. These are the kind of things that God would have us pay more attention to in our daily lives than the pursuit of self-pleasure and the pursuit of gaining possession and the pursuit of gaining power and prestige. Okay, moving along. Verse 6, for the mindset of the flesh is death. And that word death means separation. Most often when you read it in the Bible, it will mean separation. Separation from God. 
And the worst possible scenario we could find ourselves in is being eternally separated from God. Being separated from God forever. Of course, we know that death means separation from our family and our friends. But death is also ultimately a separation from God. And the book of Revelation talks about a second death. Blessed are those that don't take part in the second death. Second death is eternal separation from God. The first death is the death of this body, but our soul goes on to live. So there in verse 6, for the mindset of the flesh is death. Having your mindset on the things of the flesh is death. It's separation. It's separation from everything you love and everyone you love. But ultimately, it's separation from God himself. But the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. When we have our mindset on the things of the Spirit, it, fill, it fills us with life. It quickens our soul. It gives life to, to us inside of us. And it gives us a sense of peace and satisfaction no matter what situation or condition that we find ourselves in. Okay, the Holy Spirit also dominates our choices. The Holy Spirit gives us great help. Jesus, Remember, Jesus said, I am going away, but I'm going to send you the helper. And the Holy Spirit is our great help. The Holy Spirit does many things inside of us, uh, as well as praying as we don't know how to do and uh, interpreting Scripture to us when we don't know what it is that we're exactly reading. Uh, the Holy Spirit dominates our every choice if we are truly children of God. Verses 4 and 5, it says, Us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those whose lives are according to the flesh, think about the things of the flesh. But those whose lives are according to the Spirit, about the things of the Spirit. So if you're living your life according to the flesh, that's what dominates your thought life. That's what dominates the choices that you make in life. But if you're living your life according to the Spirit, then the Spirit helps you make even better choices. All the good choices. The, the Spirit will help us Whenever we need to make a choice and whenever we are indecisive about a choice that we need to make, let the Holy Spirit dominate our choices so that we're not walking in the flesh, but we're walking in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit also leads us. Verse 14, all those led by God's Spirit are God's Son. Or God's children would be a better interpretation. All those led by God's Spirit are God's children. We could also say only those that are led by God's Spirit are God's children. The Holy Spirit also helps us pray, as I stated before. Verses 26 and 27 in the same way the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness because we don't know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And he who searches the hearts knows the Spirit's mindset because he, he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So in the same way, the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness. Because we don't know what it is that we should even ask for from God. We don't know how to pray. We don't know exactly how to act and react as Christians until we allow the Holy Spirit to do His work inside of us. 
because we don't know what even to pray for. But the Spirit intercedes for us. It is God inside of us that intercedes on our behalf, uh, is a go-between on our behalf, and speaks to God directly for us, even when we don't know what to say. Unspoken groanings is what it says there. But it's really just talking to God and not knowing what in the world we're talking about. Even though we may not have a good pulse on what we are thinking about and what decisions we need to make, God always has his finger on the pulse. And he helps us whenever we are in need. Whenever we need to pray, either for whatever it is, uh, just in adoration to God, uh, in confession to God, to give God thanks, or to ask for things for other people and for ourselves. And moving along, the Holy Spirit also kills the power of the old life the old person that we used to be. The Holy Spirit living inside of us kills the old person that we used to be. Gives us the power to become a new creature in Christ. Verses 12 and 13 say this. So then, brothers, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if By the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Holy Spirit kills the power of the flesh, kills the power of the old person that we used to be, gives us the grace and the power to overcome and start becoming the person that we ought to be, the person that we want to become. So, We're not obligated to live our lives as we used to, according to the flesh and according to sin, according to selfish, evil desire. But now we've been made free to live our lives according to the Spirit. And that'll that'll do it for today. So if everyone will please stand, we'll be dismissed.